What is happening, PGA DFS fans? Thanks for joining me for another one of my top five videos here for the Osmo.com YouTube channel. Of course, if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notified right when these videos come live. This one, like I mentioned, is the sleepers for the FedEx St. Jude Classic. And it's always nice to come back after a week where two of my sleepers, in fact, three of my sleepers, the three lower priced sleepers of last week all came in the top five. That's an A plus right there. I don't even have to worry about the last two guys. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Rory Sabatini, 3.5% owned. Had him. Came in second. CT Pan, 6% owned. Came in third. Got the bronze medal. And last but not least, Sebastian Munoz. He was about 8 or 9% owned. Came in a tie for fourth. That's amazing stuff. It helped me get back some of the money that I lost by trying to fade Mito Pereira. Ended up having a decent week. Actually had a shot with those three golfers alone at trying to get inside the top five of both the $5 and $10. But Mito Pereira's last four holes crushed my hopes and dreams. They're still a really good week. I've gotten a few messages from you folks out there that had that were able to cash in on that good advice. Kenzie Hughes and Patrick Reed were my other two golfers that I threw in there. Neither played all that great. All right, let's go ahead and talk about my five for this week. And on first run of our ownership, I got to be honest, it's pretty evenly spread throughout the board. In fact, the highest price golfers this week, the highest owned golfer is 19%. So not that many sleepers. Not that many big-time fades either, but of course, we're just going to talk about the sleepers. Let's talk about Jim Herman. He is one of the few guys or golfers under 5% projected on this week, and I'm not really sure why. Jim Herman coming into this week, $6,000 on DraftKings, just 2% projected on, and he's coming in off of four straight top 20s. Now, he hasn't played in the last two weeks. Didn't get in the Olympics and skipped out on the 3M. But before that, it was four straight top, I think, 28 for Herman. And we, when we look at his strokes gained statistics, we see that he's having, for all intents and purposes, a pretty darn good year. Off the tee, well, those numbers, that is probably the most surprising one of them all, to be completely honest with you. 23rd this year off the tee, just hits a ton of fairways and has been able to add a little bit of distance there. His approach numbers, not that great, 166. Around the green, 188 and 163rd on putting for Jim Herman. So we know that if he peppers fairways, he gets himself into position, can do pretty well. In fact, the last four starts, when I mentioned he came in the top 28 in each of them, he gained strokes throughout the board, including with his putter. So... A really decent season for Jim Herman and has another chance to add a couple of, at least a couple of dollars to his bank account that he believes will be growing by $40 million at the end of the year. He thinks he's going to win that PIP award handed out to the golfer this year uh, that is most influential on social media. He's taken a good joke of it and jabs at himself quite a bit. I got to be honest, it's giving me a little bit of more respect for Herman. But this week at 6000 flat, he seems like a pretty good value. Next, I want to talk about Lucas Herbert. I had a choice between him or Garrick Higo. I kind of like both, but it looks like Herbert probably going to come in maybe a percent or two under him, right around that 5% mark at 6300 Coming in, of uh, course, history for Herbert. He did play in this event last year and came 49th in his first time, and he wasn't even playing that great, so I certainly like that. We know he did not play in the Olympics last week for Australia, wasn't able to qualify and missed the cut at the 3M Open after being pretty popular, but I think after that, he was also priced in the mid-8s. We get him here at 6,300 this week. Talk about his strokes gain ranks. Well, he doesn't have quite enough starts on the PGA Tour to get that. But another good finish here this week, and he could be eligible at least for the Corn Ferry Tour Finals, if not something a little bit more. So Lucas Herbert, 6,300 this week, like him a lot. Another guy that I like a lot that certainly has a chance to possibly play himself onto the Ryder Cup, well, that's Phil Nicholson, $6,600 this week and only 6% owned. And last year when he was going through a bad spurt, he still found a way to come into the top five of this event, coming in runner-up. There last year, 57th the year before. He also adds in another win. He's got, he just has good course history. He hasn't played in a couple of weeks, though. Taking a little bit of a break, but certainly not a little bit of a break from Twitter. 
as he was able to really give it to Harry Higgs a couple of weeks ago. Harry realized that he hadn't qualified for this event, but was trying to schedule a, a, a I was going to say a fight, a match, if you will, against Phil Mickelson and partners, but they had to then schedule it for a couple of weeks later when Harry Higgs would actually be in the field. So for Phil, yeah, it hasn't gone good since the win, a missed cut twice and three finishes outside of the top 60 but for phil he's got something to play for has a with a good finish i should say with a good finish here this week i believe he'll be in the conversation for the Ryder cup so keep an eye phil mickelson just five percent on this week all right my four sleeper is one of the three golfers that are projected under 10 percent owned right now that is above eight thousand dollars and in fact for this golfer he's actually uh, for all three golfers, I should say, they're projected at about 9% on, so not much under 10%. We're going to talk about Tommy Fleetwood first. Of course, history looks pretty good, 35th and 4th. And what I loved last week, even though he came in 16th, well, I like the fact that he scored a tremendous amount, went on a run of birdies there on Saturday, almost had a double eagle on Sunday. So while his finishes may not be that great, he still is scoring. Let's find out why his finishes haven't been all that good this year. Looking at his strokes gain, rank 162 off the tee and 109 on the approach. That's not going to get it done on the PGA Tour. Sixth around the green at least gives him some decent finishes, but 127 putting, that's certainly going to need to be better here this week. But I like where the game is trending, and I like the fact that he is gaining confidence with the putter and scoring well. Hopefully the scoring well turns into good results. All right, last but not least, Abraham Answer. He's in a pack of four golfers there in the low 8Ks that are all going to be around 10 or 11 or 12% owned. And I like answer the best here this week. Coming in off the 14th place finish at the Olympics, but it was a little bit better. Had a weird thing happen to him on Sunday that pushed him down the leaderboard a bit. Plus good course history coming in 15th here at this tournament last year. Seems like a course that should set up well for a guy that absolutely peppers fairways off the tee. Take a look at his strokes gain ranks. That's where he gains him off the tee. 25th this year. 31st on the approach gives him some pretty good ball striking numbers. Does struggle around the green if he doesn't hit him. 122nd this year. But 43rd putting, certainly an improvement of what we've seen and has contributed to his good success this year. So Abraham answer, just 11% on this week, 8,300. Now, typically, I try and get at least all five of my golfers that are going to be projected under 10% owned. But it's really hard to do that. With the fact that only three golfers right now above 8,000 are projected under 10% owned. They are Tommy Fleetwood, who I already mentioned, Shane Lowry, and Hideki Matsuyama. Of course, be sure to stay tuned and check in on our updates for the projected ownership throughout the week by becoming an Osmo Plus member. It's one of our premium tools there, along with so many more great tools, including pro plays, golfer rankings, and so, so much more. The ownership lately, it has been an absolute fire for projecting who is going to be highly owned and who isn't. So you'll want to get involved, especially with only 66 golfers in the field here this week for the WGC FedEx St. Jude. Okay, let's go over five to one again in case you missed any. Jim Herman, Lucas Herbert, Phil Mickelson, Tommy Fleetwood, Abraham Answer. That is going to do it for the top five sleepers for the WGC FedEx St. Jude. I'll be back next week for the Wyndham Championship the week before the playoffs start. So until then, everybody, good luck. We'll see you on the other side. Cheers.